I've been sitting here for like 20 minutes trying to think of a way to start this video that will do it justice and I can't, so glow-in-the-dark oil paints. Frequenters of this channel might know that I'm an enthusiast for unusual and uncommon art supplies from fluorescent inks to glow-in-the-dark handmade paper. I was recently approached by Russ Wagner from Glow Cubed about his line of glow-in-the-dark oil paints. This video isn't sponsored, but I was sent these paints to try out. He also sent a page of instructions and tips, so thank you so much, Russ. I have a teeny bit of experience with oil paints, but it's been a while since I used them, and this was the perfect excuse to get back into it. These paints range from transparent to semi-transparent, and they are UV blacklight reactive as well as phosphorescent. There wasn't pigment information on the tubes, but the packet that Russ sent me listed the ingredients as refined linseed oil and high-grade stronium aluminate doped with europium, which is a mouthful. That is the technology that is often used in glow-in-the-dark toys. They come in a set of 10 colors, rocket red, pink orange, orange, orange yellow, yellow green, Lightning Bug, which is your classic glow-in-the-dark pale green, like those stars that you used to stick in your bedroom as kids. Green. Blue Mermaid, which is like Lightning Bug, but a bit more on the blue side. Blue and Blue Purple. I also received some extra tubes not found in sets, including Magenta Tangerine and Blue Green. And a second set of five whites that come with white blue, white purple, white red, white orange, and white white. Now I learned that the tubes that have two colors listed on them, such as pink orange, the top color, like pink, will be the color that it appears in daylight, and the bottom color will be the color that it glows in the dark. So pink orange looks pink in daylight, and then once the lights are off, it glows orange. The white set as such all look the same when they're not exposed to UV light. They have sort of an off-white color, but they emit different hues when they're glowing. Eager to try these paints out, I painted these swatches on canvas board that I prepared with strips of black acrylic paint in order to showcase the difference in appearance between a black and white background. Photoluminescent paints require light to pass through them and reflect off of the surface behind in order to work, so they're most vibrant when the light can reflect off of a white background. Painting over a black background will reduce how much it glows, but this can be used to create neat hidden glow effects. I'll show that off when I get to the painting that we're doing for this video. One thing to note when using these paints is that they can appear a little bit grainy. This is because the photoluminescent particles are less potent the smaller they are, so they aren't as finely milled as traditional oils. They definitely feel a little bit different to use than typical oil paints, but that's because they are different. It's not a detriment, just something to keep in mind. Anyway, I'm definitely going to be using these a lot more, so stay tuned and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on videos like this in the future. In the painting I'm working on, I wanted to challenge myself to use just the glow-in-the-dark paints only, but it was proving to be ineffective for painting the composition that I wanted. So I brought in my regular oil paints for painting the figure. I started with a layer of just lightning bug for the background because I wanted to potentially be able to have bits of glow pop through, but in the end I don't think that actually showed through at all. These paints can be paired and layered and even mixed with regular oil paints. If you're going to mix them, Russ suggests using only a small amount of transparent oil paint to tint the glow paints, since opaque pigments will interfere with the UV light reaching the photoluminescent particles. This paint can also be mixed with oil mediums such as Galkid to reduce drying time, which is something that I relied heavily on for this painting. Even with the Galkid, the glow paints took much longer to dry than my regular oil paints. I'm not sure, but I believe this might be because of the way that the pigments aren't milled as finely. I'm not sure 
the science that goes into creating oil paints, so I'm not sure if pigment particle size has any reflection on drying time. The humidity of the summer here didn't help either, so in all this painting took almost three months to complete. For the actual composition of this painting, I had this idea of this woman submerged in water, and there was going to be a lot more to it. But just based on the canvas size and the amount of detail that I thought I could get in, I just stuck with the half above water, half underwater. I actually struggled a lot with the, uh, the separation of both sides. I think the face is a little bit skewed underwater, but you can kind of just chalk that up to uh, light refraction. At least that's what I'm telling myself. I went through a lot of stages of self-doubt with this painting, but I'm really glad I pushed through because in the end I actually really like it. Now I mentioned earlier that you can use the glow-in-the-dark oils to create some hidden glowing effects, and I actually did that in the underwater eye. I wanted there to be a difference between the upper and lower portions, so in the top her eyes are closed, but underwater her eye is open in almost a haunting kind of way. So in order to emphasize that, I added glow-in-the-dark oils to her eye, and you can't see them until the lights are off, and I love that. The entire sunset behind her is done in different colors of the glow-in-the-dark oils, and it's interesting because Lightning Bug and Blue Mermaid and the uh, White series all kind of have the same off-white greenish hue that's typical of glow-in-the-dark items in the daylight, but then when the lights are off you see so many different colors in, the, in just the sun portion alone, let alone the magenta and pinks coming in from the sides of the sunset. At some point I think I want to play with um, adding hidden images using just uh, Lightning Bug and Blue Mermaid and the White series alone. Because the way that they look pretty similar in the daylight, but then they glow entirely different colors at night is really interesting to me. I think someday I'd also like to endeavor to try to paint something that uses only the glow-in-the-dark paints, but again, I found that really difficult this time, and I ended up bringing in my regular oils to add some contrast and like actual solid colors and depth, um, especially because it's difficult to get... Um, it's very difficult to get neutral colors and also darker tones with just the glow-in-the-dark paints, because they are so bright. So a lot of the pale pinks and blues in her skin tone would have been very, very difficult to achieve with just the glow-in-the-dark colors alone. But maybe someday. Maybe someday. Photoluminescent particles are known to be fugitive colors, so keep that in mind if you're going to work with them. But what they lack in light fastness, they make up for in distinctiveness. While these paints directly conflict with my like innate vampiric need to hide from the beaming incandescent ball of gas in the sky, it's so cool to see these paintings glow hours into the night. I'm honestly delighted by these paints. If you're looking for a way to really set your paintings apart from the rest, check out Glow Cubed Photoluminescent Oils. You can find them at glowcubed.com and on Amazon. The link will be in the description. Thank you again to Russ for giving me the opportunity to try these out. If you're interested in adopting this original painting, she'll be available in my online store at madamberry.com. The link for that will also be in the description. If you want to take a look at another really interesting art supply and more glowy things, check out this video where I paint with fluorescent inks on paper made of plastic. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.